We just saw vertical shift was about. Let's take a look at horizontal shifts. So if you look at the line y equals the slope times x, so let's say c is the rise and d is the run, c over dx, or c is 5 and d is 5, so c over d is 1. If I change that to 2, look what happens. I have a different line. If I change that to uh, 4, then the slope is 4 over 2 or 2. All right, but now this b, what does this b do? So let's just change that b and see what happens. You can see that your point is moving up just like before. That's our vertical shift. Okay, So we just saw that vertical shift happens when you change this b right here. All right, let's take a look and see what happens when you change this A. So pay attention to this point B and see what happens to it. Does it go left, right, up, down? What happens? So let's keep an eye on it. Oh, look, it's going to the right. So when B is, for example, 5, where do you think it will go? It will go right here. You see that? So if you have Y equals slope times X minus 5, plus 0. So what happens then? x minus 5 is taking this graph to 5 units to the side. It's a little harder to see it when you're working with lines because the line, you really have to pay attention which way this point is moving. But you can always make this um, a to be a negative 5 and see what happens and see where it goes. See, now it went here. So. This A is controlling left-right movement, the horizontal shift. It's easier to see this kind of shift in horizontal shift in other graphs. For example, x squared. C and D are 1. So this is just y equals x squared. We saw this graph y equals x squared before. So let's graph this one and see what happens. Right now, A and B are 0. But let's just see what happens if you change the B. So again, when you change the B, you can see how this point traced on it is just going up. OK, let's bring it back to 0. So moving this coordinate here, moving this number here makes it go up. If you make it negative, it will go down, you can see. Right? All right, so make that a 0. Now let's what, see what happens when you move this A. So if you move this A, it moves sideways. You can see it's the same graph, except it moves sideways. So those are some things you can look for. You can play with this if you want to identify what happens when A and B both change then. Well, let's change the B to a 5, and you'll see. It's already moved here, so 5. Changing in the B here will make it go up 5. Let's take a look. If I change this to a negative 2, it's going to go which way? Left. OK. So A controls left-right movement. B controls up-down movement. All right, so what happens to the relationship of y with x when you shift the line left or right? Well, we have, here's our line, OK? So y equals 2 thirds x minus 2. So look what happens. It went 1, 2, 3 units to the right. So replacing x with x minus 3 moved the line 3 units to the right. Go to the left. Again, the equation of the line will be y equals x plus 6, plus 6, because you're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units to the left, because it's x minus minus 6. So y equals slope times x minus a plus b. b is taking it b units up down. x minus a is taking it a units, where a is bigger than 0 will take it to the right. Smaller than 0 will take it to the left equation of the lines that shifted by A units would be if you add A on the outside. And subtract A will take it down A.
So given these observations, if you write the equation of the line y equals m times x minus a, m is the slope. A is how many units you shifted to the right or to the left, depending on the value of A. So M is the slope. Negative M times A will represent Y intercept, because you'll replace X to 0. So equation of a line holds a lot of information. X intercept, Y intercept, slope, shifting left or right, shifting up or down, lots of information. Equation of a line that has slope m and passes through a generic point x1, y1 is given by y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That is the shift that we were talking about. x1 units to the right or left, depending on where x1 is, and y1 units up or down, depending on where y1 unit is. So point slope form holds tremendous amount of information and it's probably the most preferred way people use equation of lines in calculus and other classes. All right, so let's see what you can do. Sketch the graph of this line. So right away, you can see x equals 2 and y equals 1 is a point on the line. 3 over 1 is the slope. So 2, 1 is the point, And 3 over 1 up is the slope. And there's your equation of the line. All right, let's see if you can do this next one on your own. Pause the video and see what you can do, and then we'll discuss it. So x is negative 1. So x coordinate is negative 1. When x is negative 1, y coordinate will be 4. So that will be right there. Slope is negative 3 halves. So 3 down and 2 over. So there's your point, and then connect the two. So there's your equation here. Slope is negative 3 halves. All right, determine if each example here, the line is perpendicular or parallel to each other or neither. How about these two lines? If you reduce this, you'll have negative 3 halves. This slope is 3 halves. So nope, they are not the same slopes. They are not negative reciprocals of each other, right? Because their product is not negative 1, so they are neither parallel nor perpendicular. How about these two lines? Simplify this line so that you can find the slope. So we have slope of that line is going to be 6 thirds x. 6 over 3 is 2. So slope of this line is 2. Slope of this line is 2, so they have same slope, so they are parallel to each other. All right, try this one on your own. Two lines that pass through the points negative 2, 3, and 7, 5. And the second line goes through 6, 4, and negative 10, negative 14. See what you can do. Remember, you have to find slope and see if there's any relationship between the slope of the two lines. All right. Slope of the line going through those two is going to be the difference of y coordinates over difference of x coordinates, which will give you two nines. Slope of the line going through those two points gives you nine halves, negative. So these two slopes are negative reciprocals of each other, or that their product is negative 1, which means that their lines are perpendicular to each other. All right, four. Find the equation of the line passing through these two points. So anytime you want the equation of a line, you need slope. So we find the slope first, difference of y over difference of x. And there are two ways now to get equation of a line. First is to use y equals mx plus b format, which many people like reusing. So y equals negative 5 fourths x plus b in order to find the b. Use the one of the coordinates that are given to you. Substitute x is 1, y is negative 1, and solve for b. So we do that and solve. You know how to solve for b now. And so that's going to give you b equals a quarter. Because you add 5, you get 1, and divide both sides by 4. So b is a quarter. So your equation of the line is y equals negative 5 quarters x plus quarter. Second method would be, again, to find the slope, which we did rise over run like before, which is negative 5 quarters. All right, then 
we know that slope means what? That if you take any point x, y on the line, that the slope is again negative 5 quarters. So y minus 4 over x minus minus 3, slope should be negative 5 quarters, or y minus 4 equals slope times x minus x1, or here's another way to write equation of the line in point slope form. This is the form of line that I told you is used heavily in calculus, physics, and other disciplines. All right, find the equation of the line that has this slope and goes through that point. So y minus y coordinate equals slope times x minus x coordinate. Or you can rewrite it like this. You can, of course, do y equals mx plus b. But if you look at how the numbers are written, uh, it might take too much calculations to find y equals mx plus b form. This form of equation is much, much useful when it's something like this. OK, you do this one on your own. Remember, any time you want an equation of a line, you must have slope. If not, you have to find slope in a certain way. The slope is in, hidden in this equation here, right? Perpendicular to this line. So what do you think? Slope is negative reciprocal of whatever slope is here. So solve this equation to write it as y equals slope-intercept form, and that will give you the slope. So slope of that equation is negative 3 fifths, which means that the slope of our equation is 5 thirds, negative reciprocal, because we want perpendicular line. So then y minus the y coordinate equals slope times x minus x coordinate. And there's your equation of the line. All right, you try this on your own. Pause the video and see what you can do. All right, so now, again, point slope form and slope intercept form, standard form. We'll do all three so that we get used to them. In point slope form, we want parallel line. So slope is going to be 2, so it'll be y minus. Slope is 2, remember. So y minus y coordinate equals slope times x minus x coordinate, which will give you this. All right. Slope intercept form. So y equals 2x minus 10 minus 3. Just simplify that. Gives you y equals 2x minus 13. Standard form. We haven't talked about that yet. But if you just write the equation so that both x, y terms are on the same side and just a constant on the other side. So ax plus by equals c. That's the standard form. Sketch the graph of the inequalities below them. So we've done inequality sketching before. So you know, sketch the graph of y equals first. So plot the graph of the line y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 1. So minus 1 is the y-intercept. Negative 2 thirds is the slope. So down 2 and over 3. OK, connect. It's love y less equals, so it's a solid line. And then you're going to shade the region under, right? You can do a test value, and then that's false, so which means you're going to shade this part under, all the way across. All right, try that on your own. Y-intercept or x-intercept, what do you think? Remember how it's written, x equals. So x-intercept is 2. And now instead of rise over run, you're going to go run over rise because it's x equals. So run is 3, rise is 2. So 3 over and 2 up. And dotted line or solid line? Because there is no equal to, you want a dotted line. And now you want x coordinate to be bigger than 3 halves y plus 2. You can also do a test point and check. So let's say 0, 0. 0 is bigger than 2. That would be a false statement. So 0, 0 is not part of the solution, so it will have to be under. Mm -hmm. Try these problems on your own.